There's a cave scene in the movie. We go to this gigantic, we go to this gigantic cave in the movie. Um, and the ending scene is like in this big cave. And so we found that location. It's a movie ranch like two hours north of Los Angeles. Um, and they were building the cave when we went there two months earlier. And I was like, oh, this is great. They're like, you know, what they do is they dig a hole in the ground, basically. And so the walls of the cave are real dirt, but then they build the top of the cave over with construction and then, you know, do dry mold or whatever, make it look like dirt. And then they put lights in there. So then you have total control in the cave to make it look the way you want. So I went two months earlier before shooting and, and paid for the location and was like, oh, this is great. We're going to be the first people shooting in this giant, beautiful cave. And I'm super excited about it. Well, the day before shooting, the day before we're going to go up there, they tell us basically that the cave is not finished. The, the half the cave is finished and the other half uh, is not done at all. So, you know, you can't shoot here. And I'm like, we're coming to shoot there. We have a contract. I, I can't not go there now. So I was like, I sent Seth, my, Seth Himes, my partner, my writing partner, producing partner up there to take pictures of it. So I ended up having to shoot the scene facing one direction because you can't, you have to face only one direction in that scene. So every, every shot in that whole scene is facing one direction, but you don't know. So I'm talking to you, behind you is the same wall that's behind me. We just lit it different. And so that was the solution to that problem is like, we went up there and I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to just have to shoot everything in one direction. So I had to keep in my head when people walk, like what direction they were and what direction we shot and, um, and light the wall differently. So the cracks, because it's not a flat wall, to make it look different. And it was really hard for my DP and the people around me to trust that I could do that in my head. You know, but no one's ever mentioned it. No one has ever noticed that, that in the movie. So when you watch the movie, it's facing all one direction. <laughs> So, yeah. Which problems do you like figuring out more? Which is, which is a better challenge for you? The problems that come up as a director, because most of them are out of your control, they're mm -hmm. all external things, or as a screenwriter, they're really internal. They're about you cracking the story somehow. Um, I mean, they're very different. Um, the nice part about the screenwriting process for me um, and Seth is that we didn't have a time limit. You know, we didn't have a, you know, some people have to write scripts for pay and they have a time limit and they have to rush through things. We had enough time to really figure out problems and also just do rewrites after rewrite after rewrite to try to get it right. And sometimes, you know, like originally in the original script, in the movie, While He Got Wasted, we have dirty cops chasing us because, um, spoiler alert, uh, Wally, Wally actually filmed them kill somebody. So then they're ch on his phone. So they're chasing us the whole movie, trying to get his phone back because he tried to blackmail them. But he's dead the whole time. They don't know he's dead. So they're chasing us, trying to get that phone. And, um, <clears throat> and in the writing, originally, those were mafia guys. And it just didn't really work in the writing process. And I think... I just uh, kind of obsess. That's one of the reasons why it's hard for me to start a project because like once I'm in it, I'm obsessive. And so I would obsess and obsess, obsess, trying to fix the problem. And I think in a dream, actually, I came up with them being dirty cops. And then I wake up in the morning and I like have the solution. And I was like, dirty cops, perfect. Back when we wrote it, now it's like, of course, dirty cops. They're everywhere. There's all this footage of them killing people and all these kinds of things. Back then, we, this is 2014. I think there was like one incident of a cop shooting a guy. So it wasn't so prevalent as, as it is now. Um, so it was kind of like, ah, I came up with the perfect idea. Now it's kind of, I guess, obvious to a lot of people of, of uh, the biggest villains would be dirty cops. But back then it wasn't like that. So, I mean, that's how it tied all together. And I came up with the dirty cops. I also came up with the phone and recording them because we needed, we needed to move the story forward and having people chase us. And it was figuring out how do we do that? How do we have somebody chase us? And why are they chasing us? And all that kind of stuff. And so I came up with dirty cops were filmed doing a dirty deed and they're chasing us to get the evidence. That was, that was like the, one of the key elements of writing it. It was like, okay, this can move the story forward. So, but the problems on set, totally different because of very time restraint, you know, it's like, we're going and we're shooting no matter what. I can't stop this train. So if a cave isn't fi finished, we have to fix it. If the grip truck 
gets a flat tire with our, which our grip truck got a flat tire one day. It was like, well, what can we shoot without the lights? Because we don't have lights right now, you know. Um, so there's just all these kinds of problems, you know, that, that come up on the day and you just have to fix them. And you can't, there's no time as a film director, like I'm asking, I'm answering questions every single second of the day as a director. I'm also, I was also acting in the film, so I got to focus on my lines and delivery and all that stuff and, and helping actors. But I'm still answering questions. Do you want this? Do you want to wear this? Do you want her to wear this blouse or this blouse? What color do you want? Oh, I want that one. Um, do you like the lighting over here? Is this too dark, too light? I'm getting asked a question almost every 60 seconds. So you have to be fast when you ask me a question. I don't have time for you to give me a song and a dance about why something's wrong. Just tell me what's wrong so we can fix it. And I try not to ever turn down ideas that people want to give ideas. I just usually tell them, okay, I, I have a plan for this, so I'm going to do what I planned, and, and we're going to get to that afterwards. And if I don't like it, we're not going to get to it. But I don't have to tell you that. You know, I'll just say we ran out of time. But I don't want to ever turn any ideas down because that's the moment people stop giving me ideas. And it needs to be a creative space for people to share ideas, you know, and, and speak their mind. And do it in an appropriate way, though, because I do have limited time and I am doing certain things. So if you're the, there's a certain time to give me a, an idea. Most of it, hopefully, in pre-production. I have table reads, I have, you know, I try to get people together so they can be part of the creative process. So when we get on set, you're not like, oh, I have an idea I've been wanting to tell you. No, you should have done that when we were rehearsing. You know what I mean? That's why I do all that time. And I go to every single location with the DP and tell them every shot that I want to do and the look that I want. And we, as much as you can do ahead of time, it really helps you when you're making the movie because the unforeseeable problems come up. And if you haven't discussed the things you can discuss ahead of time, you might not get a chance to discuss them anymore, you know, um, as to where you could have settled that out in, in pre-production on how it's going to get lit or, you know. I have a shot list, I know all my shots, I know how I'm going to put it together in my head when we get there. And sometimes there's only one way when you go to editing to put it together. And when I edit the film, I edit with an editor, but I'm there every single day. Every single frame, every cut is usually me going, no, don't go back a millisecond, cut there, you know, because he hands it to him here and I, I needed his hand out. Like I know exactly where I want to cut usually. Um, and I hear some directors actually edit in camera. I mean, it's so, they hype that up. I'm just like, it's so not important nowadays. It's just funny. It doesn't matter if you, if you cut it. You don't have to cut it. You might as well film for 20 more seconds. You're not paying for film. But anyway, it's, it's another topic. <laughs>